Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk will call the roll. Councilor Garcia. Present. Councilor Vidot. Present. Councilor Avazaneda. Council Rodriguez. Here. Council Lopez. Here. Council Brown. Here. Council Pilatonda. Here. Council Tejada. Present. Council Robinson. Here. Council Bishop. Present. Council of Recupero. Ten members present. You have a call, Madam Chairman. Okay, very good. At this time, I'd like to suspend um, the rules to invite the Chief of Fire to come up here to swear in a couple of uh, fire. Department staff. Thank you, Madam President. Once again, I thank you, members of the council, for allowing us to come before you to officially swear in our next deputy chief, captain, and lieutenant. With each promotion comes more challenges and responsibilities, and I'm confident the members we present tonight are up to the task and will excel in their new assignments. Tonight's promotions are the result of the, re the recent retirement of Deputy Chief Robert Cameron, who retired after 35 years of loyal and faithful service to the city of Chelsea. Deputy Cameron's here tonight, if you could stand. First, I present Richard Peresy for promotion to the rank of Deputy Chief. Deputy Chief Peresy is married to Maureen. They have two children, Richard Jr. and Jennifer, and two grandchildren, Bennett and Madeline. He has a business degree from Northeastern University and a fire science degree from North Shore Community College. He is a certified fire and explosive investigator, certified juvenile fire setter intervention specialist. He attended New Mexico Tech for training in prevention and response to suicide bombings and incident response to acts of terrorism. He is also the past president of the Metro Fire Austin Association, where he is a current board member. Richie's late father, Joseph, was a member of the Chelsea Fire Department from 1947 to 1971. And his brother, Jim, is an active member of Science Engine One. His current assignment is deputy chief in charge of fire prevention. And I call on the city clerk to administer the oath. Do you solemnly swear? Do solemnly swear. And affirm? And affirm. That I will faithfully? That I will faithfully. And impartially? And impartially. Perform all the duties? Perform all the duties. Incumbent upon me? Incumbent upon me? As deputy chief? As a deputy chief? For the city of Chelsea for Fire the Department? For the city of Chelsea Fire Department? According to the best of my abilities? According to the best of my abilities? And understanding? And understanding? Agreeably? Agreeably? To the rules and regulations. To the rules and regulations. Of the Constitution. Of the Constitution. And the laws of the Commonwealth. The laws of the Commonwealth. The Charter. The Charter. And the ordinances of the City of Chelsea. And the ordinances of the City of Chelsea. So help me God. So help me God. <laughs> Deputy Chief Parisi will be pinned by his wife Maureen.
Next, I present Stephen Purcell for promotion to the rank of captain. Captain Purcell is a graduate of Woburn High School and has his degree in fire science from the North Shore Community College. He's a graduate of the Massachusetts Fire Academy, class 159, with certifications in firefighter level one and level two. He is a certified fire instructor, certified hazardous materials technician, a member of the Mass State Hazmat Team, and a member of the department's fire investigative unit. He is also a member of our special operations team as a technical rescue specialist with certifications in structural collapse, tech, uh, trench rescue, heavy equipment rigging, and rope rescue. He is an emergency medical technician. His current assignment is captain of Tower One, Group One. I now call on the clerk to administer the oath. To the rules and regulations, the rules and regulations of the Constitution, Constitution and the laws of the Commonwealth, the, the, the Charter, Charter, and the ordinances of the Senior Chess. And the ordinances of the Senior Chess. So help me God. So help me God. Captain Purcell will be pinned by his mother, Louise Purcell, who will be escorted by Stephen's sister, Maureen, who he is happy to report is in remission after a long battle with stage four cancer. Finally, I present Daniel DeJordi for promotion to the rank of lieutenant. <laughs> lieutenant DeJordi is married to Danielle Vitulo DeJordi and is a graduate of Oakmont Regional High School in Ashburnham, Mass. He has a Bachelor of Science degree from Salem State and a Master's in Public Administration from Anna Maria College. He graduated the Brooklyn Fire Academy with certifications in firefighter level one and level two and hazardous, hazardous materials operations level. He is also a member of our special operations team and certified in structural collapse, technical search, rope rescue, and confined space. He's also an emergency medical technician. Dan is a veteran of the United States Marine Corps where he served from 2008 to 2012 and he was deployed to the Middle East in support of Operation Enduring Freedom in 2011. He's currently assigned to the Fire Prevention Division as the Code Enforcement Officer. Once again, I call on the clerk for the oath. Thank you. 
And Lieutenant DeGiordi will be pinned by his wife, Danielle. That concludes our ceremony. Madam President. We'll remain in recess for a couple of minutes so the families can take pictures. Back to order? Back to yes. Order. Back to order? Yeah. We're back to order. The uh, first resolution introduced by Councilor Robinson and all members of the City Council. In 1926, Carter G. Woodson, the child of slave parents, established Negro History uh, Week to celebrate and study the accomplishments of African Americans. And whereas this event evolved into Black History Month in the United States, a country of African Americans, and whereas as Carter G. Woodson valued education and believed that it was never too late to learn, it is beneficial for all Americans to continue to learn about the heritage <coughs> and the experiences of all Americans. And whereas is it through learning that we become enlightened and come to understand each other more clearly. And whereas the Black History Planning Committee, comprised of Ron and Leo Robinson, Joan Cromwell, Sharon Caulfield, and Henry Wilson, continues to play a significant role in presenting black history and cultural celebrations and programming to our community. 
However, as this year's theme for 2019 Black History Month is Black Migration, WW1 and Chelsea Fire, and the following programs will be presented. The kickoff for Chelsea Black History Month storefront exhibit of black historical figures of Chelsea at Gallery 456 and exhibit at Chelsea Public Library on Black Migration, WW1 and Chelsea Fire, February 1st. The City Hall Art Reception, February 5th. The Tuskegee, the Tuskegee Airmen Documentary and Discussion, February 7th at Bunker Hill Community College. The Counselor's Cook-Off Community Dinner, February 18th at Iglesia La Luz de Cristo de Maya Angelo. Poet and Civil Rights Hidden Figure, Celebration of Phenomenal Women, February 21st at the Senior Center. An Evening of Performing Arts, February 22nd at the Clark Avenue School. STEM at Chelsea Public Library on February 23rd. New England Gospel Ensemble, February 26th at Bunker Hill Community College. And the end of the month celebration, February 28th, hosting as keynote speaker, Suffolk District Attorney Rachel Rollins, and with special recognition honoring the Chelsea Trailblazers. Now, therefore, <coughs> be it resolved that the Chelsea City Council hereby recognizes February as Black History Month and wishes to thank the Lewis H. Latimer Society, Bunker Hill Community College, and the Chelsea Black Community for their contributions to the city of Chelsea and beyond. Chair recognizes Councilor Robinson. Unanimously under suspension. I'll be very brief. Actually, Black History is all year round. It's not only singled out uh, in February, as you could see. The committee put a whole month of activities that have happened that starts with us at this council to be able to attend some of these events and show our support <coughs> to our local community. The kickoff will be on February 1 and it will end on February 28th with the new district attorney, Rachel Rollins, being the keynote speaker at the Williams School that evening. So I want to thank you in regard to this. The, uh, any more discussion? Any more? No. Okay. The next resolution introduced by Councilor Robinson and all members of the City Council. Whereas Maya Angelou was born Margaret Ann Johnson on April 4th, 1928 in St. Louis, Missouri, and as a young child later moved to Stamps, Arkansas, where she was raised by her paternal grandmother. And whereas in her early years, Maya attended Mission High School in San Francisco, California, where her love for the arts earned her a scholarship to study dance and drama at San Francisco's Labor School. And whereas after the birth of her son, Guy, Maya, a single mother, worked tirelessly doing everything to support her son. However, her passion for poetry, music, dance, and theater would soon lead her to the big stage for such performances in the opera production of Porgy and Bess in 1954 and 1955 danced with Alvin Ailey on several television variety shows, and by 1957 had recorded her first record album entitled Calypso Lady. And whereas Dr. Angelo exercised her political strengths, becoming active in the civil rights movement where she worked with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X, and in 1959 at the request of Dr. King, served as the Northern Coordinator of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. And whereas over the span of her lifetime, she has begun been recognized throughout the world as an American author, poet, and historian, publishing seven autobiographies, three books of essays, and countless books of poetry depicting her life experiences and work including titles such as Mom and Me and Mom, 2013, Letter to My Daughter in 2008, All God's Children Need Traveling Shoes, 1986, Still I Rise, 1978, and one of her most internationally acclaimed autobiographies, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, 1969 which focused on her childhood life and was nominated for the National Book Award. And Dr. Angela was also a Grammy Award winner. And whereas Dr. Angela's presence as a teacher and a lecturer was demanded internationally, she was invited by several United States presidents to serve in various capacities, such as the American Revolution Bicentennial Commission, the Presidential Commission for the International Year of the Woman, and at the request of President Bill Clinton, composed a poem on the pulse of the morning, which she read at his inauguration in 1993. And whereas on May 28, 2014, at the age of 86, Maya Angelou passed away at her home in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Now therefore, be it resolved that the Chelsea City Council hereby recognize the life of the phenomenal woman, Dr. Maya Angelou, for her creativity, uniqueness, talent, and the legacy of literature that will live on forever. And be it further resolved that the Chelsea City Council, on behalf of the citizens of Chelsea, hereby recognizes February 21st, 2019, as Dr. Maya Angelou Day. Councilor Robinson. Adopt this unanimously under suspension. 
This is uh, a program that's in conjunction with the Senior Center who requested to do this on the 21st. We'll be doing some poetry reading by Sharon Caulfield and other members of the Senior Center. And also, we're proclaiming February 21st as Maya Angelou Day here in the city of Chelsea. The next resolution is introduced by Angel Lopez and all members of the set, uh, Chelsea City Council. Whereas the CET, properly known as the Community Enhancement Team, has continuously been involved in transformation campaigns which have positively influenced the community in many ways. And whereas in 2009 and 2010, the CET group focused their energy on trash and recycling efforts, thus expanding the recycling program. And whereas their involvement in the community also included Earth Day installation of the cigarette butlers, the summer and fall cleanup programs, and most noteworthy, the Marlboro Street and Willow Street intersection of flowers and vegetation. Now, therefore, be it resolved that on behalf of the citizens of Chelsea, we, the members of the Chelsea City Council, wish to go on record so as to recognize the dedication and accomplishments of the individuals who make up their devoted team and wish to say thank you very much for your extraordinary efforts in making Chelsea a better place to live. Chair recognizes Councilor Vidal. Doesn't the suspension if there are no objections, and I'd like to speak on it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Um, I just want to thank Councilor Lopez for bringing this forward. The community um, and has team has been um, key in a lot of the things that are happening in the city, as far as putting up speed bumps, taking care of our tree pits, um, those signs that you see at Chelsea Square Soldiers Home, they're the ones that came up with that. Um, they were very supportive of the plastic bag ban. They're constantly cleaning up the streets of the city. You know, a lot of times you, we give credit to the city councilors that are up here that are, you know, legislated, but at the end of the day, you can't have community without the community. So I just want to thank the CET for all of your work, for caring yep. so much about this community, yep. um, and, and for just making Chelsea great. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Councilor Lopez. Councilor Lopez? Yes, uh, we just want to congratulate the CET group I want to thank you for all the work you guys do in our community. As she mentioned, uh, you guys do a lot of work on Marble Street, Willow Street, Bellingham Hill, and to all the cleanups that you guys have done. And I want to thank you for that. And the city council and the city appreciate all the work you guys have done, the cigarette butlers and so on. You do so many work. I include myself sometimes I help you guys <laughs> also. And thank you very much for that. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Council Brown. <laughs> so I just want to echo my fellow counselors. Obviously, I want to just um, say something else. I want to thank you for your time and your dedication. I know when you give up your time to go out and do it, you don't get any reward for it. Your oh, yeah. reward is making Appreciate Chelsea beautiful. Um, so I want to thank you again um, on the efforts of the counselors resolution, but most importantly, I want to thank you for giving up your time on those days to go out and make our city a little more livable and a little more pleasant. Thank you. Anyone else? Councilor Garcia. Thank you. Uh, I also just want to thank um, Councilor Enya Lopez for bringing this up. I think it's long overdue. Um, you guys are an incredible group of committed individuals who are passionate, and I also want to echo what uh, Councillor Brown mentioned, you know, you are doing this expecting nothing in return besides making our city a better place to live, and you are the perfect example of, you know, you when you see a problem, you don't complain about it, you go out there and you fix it and you try to find a way to get others involved, and I find that to be incredible uh, because you're setting an example for everyone else and your neighbors and the children. So thank you so much for your dedication, for the love that you have for the city and for being committed and mm -hmm. always staying energized because every time I see you, you're always energized and happy <laughs> and willing to do anything and, and you're persistent and thank you. You know, thank you also for calling us out on things that we should be putting on the forefront. So thank you for being out in the trenches and for making our city a beautiful place. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Nice said. Anybody else like to speak? Councilor Robinson? I would also like to add my congratulations to them, and I'd also like to recognize all those other groups who do come out on Earth Day and help clean up the city. It wouldn't be remiss if we 
did not include Absolutely. them into what's Thank going you. on here. Anybody Thank else? You. Okay, Ali. Yep. And as for the uh, amicable support for suspending the meeting, we can present the group with the resolution. Go ahead, let's Thank you, suspend Carl. the meeting and uh, take the pictures. Please come up so you guys can get <laughs> out there. We're back to order. Public speaking. Anybody that wishes to uh, speak publicly, please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and you have four minutes. Hello. My name is Catherine Palencia. My address is 745 Broadway. I officially started today as the new children's librarian for the Chelsea Public Library. I'm extremely excited and proud. I've been working part-time there for almost 10 years. Wow. During that time, I have worked with many of you, our youth, and newcomers to the city. I want to continue to provide library services, to outreach, and to work with our schools so our community knows what a great resource we have at the Chelsea Public Library. Please let me know how we can, how we can help each other. I invite you to visit the Chelsea Public Library. Thank you. That's so nice. Thank you. Um, anybody else for public speaking? Going once, going twice. Sold. Next order of business. Approval of minutes. Approval of minutes. Regular meeting minutes of January 7th. Councilor Garcia. You adopt unanimously under suspension if there are no objections. Seeing no objections, so moved. Communication from the city manager. First communication, quarterly hiring report. Pursuant to the administrative code section 112.02, I have enclosed the required statistical quarterly report on hiring for the 12 month period from January 1, 2018 through December 31st, 2018. Count I'll be available to answer any questions. Councilor Garcia. To accept and file the communication under suspension if there are no objections. Seeing none, so moved. 
Next order of business. Second reading from the uh, city manager, correction to approval for school department prior year payment. Dear counselors, I am writing with, cor with a correction to one of the requests from the school department for payment of a prior year expense. The school department has informed me that the FY18 payment due to Thank you. We've got it. There'll be something coming up. Yep. The next communication from the city manager, free cash request. I am writing with my first request to utilize the recently certified free cash. A copy of the Mass Department of Revenue certification date, January 9, 2019, is attached. I expect to submit at least two other requests during the spring for the use of this free cash. With one one with the, some additional discretionary financial requests and one to cover end of year deficits. This first request is limited to my prior commitment to restore stabilization funds request to address three times sensitive deficits and some miscellaneous requests for discretionary spending for which I already have estimated cost. Restoration of stabilization funds, $871,000. As you know, during the fall, the prior uh, and prior to the certification of free cash, the city had some financial needs that could only be satisfied from our stabilization funds. I committed to the city council that upon certification of free cash, these funds would be replenished. Accordingly, I'm requesting that we restore the, to the general stabilization fund a total of $701,000, which reimburses that fund for the demolition of 81 and Ave, the cost of the police union contracts and the remaining upfront costs for the Eden Park renovations. Similarly, I am requesting reimbursement to the school stabilization fund of $170,000 for the cost of the protective mat for the new artificial turf field at Chelsea High School. Deficits, $140,000. There are three times sensitive deficits, which... I think everybody has a copy of this in front of them. Yeah. And does so anybody want the whole thing read? It's four pages. Can we, I just suggest that we just read the titles and the, and the, the dollar amounts? Well, and that not would, just read the entire thing. Like, you know, I would like to move, yeah. to waive the reading if possible. And okay. These All things right. are going to be discussed further anyway. You got it. So All move to a second reading. No, just um, no, accept and file. Accept and file. Accept and oh, file. Sorry. And on the on the motion, if I may say a word. Sure. I'll be brief. <clears throat> I just want to commend the city manager and compliment him on um, keeping his word to the city council and uh, sending a transfer in of 871,000 back into the stabilization fund, which is the money that we agreed to spend last month in order to do things that had to be done with the stipulation from the city manager that when the free cash was, was certified, he would move the money back into the stabilization fund. For those that are watching at home, I know it's sometimes confusing when we talk about budget and stabilization fund and capital improvement funds and this and that. I just want to make it clear that this um, stabilization fund was greatly enhanced last year with the free cash and through the efforts of this city council, the city manager agreed to put m money into the stabilization fund in the um, um, amount of over $25 million. We had a lot larger free cash last year and the free cash is realized from money that was left over from last year's budget. And it's money that wasn't spent in last year's budget. It's made free cash. It hasn't been appropriated. And that's why we're using it to do these things that the city needs to have done. People say, why so much free cash? I don't understand how this happens. It's kind of involved in, in a detail. I'm sure the city council is going to get into the detail as to what departments had money left over and where this free cash came from. The bulk of it comes from uh, an account on uh, Marginal Street, which, uh, from which we derive excise tax from Enterprise Rent-A-Car. For every car that's parked there, they pay the city excise tax. And it's a guess every year as to how much money the city's going to get. And they try to get as close as they can, but they have to be conservative because if they don't reach that goal, then we'll get, we're going to have to come up with the money to make up for it. So it's like a juggling game. So this year, I think a large portion of the money that was left over to the tune of $9,600,000, that's what was certified in free cash this year. Uh, the largest amount of that came from that account, which was the excise tax that Enterprise Rent-A-Car is paying for the city of Chelsea. 
great deal for the city of Chelsea, no question. Give us this extra money. What are we going to do with it? Well, I'm hoping we're not going to spend all of it. I'm hoping the city manager is again going to put some of it away for, into the stabilization fund, which is also another word for the rainy day fund. So when things are lean and tight, we will have these dollars in there to use to balance the budget or do whatever we have to do. But I did wanna, didn't want to let this go by without commending the city manager for keeping his word and sending this transfer in right away to put the money back into the stabilization fund that we already spent. Uh, the other requests are going to go to the, uh, I wanted to move this to the Committee on Finance, not the Committee on Conference. I said the Committee on Finance. Okay. And uh, the new chairman of the Committee on Finance will set up a meeting, I'm sure, and these items will be discussed at that meeting. Uh, if councillors have a question, they can come to that meeting and ask those questions. Thank, Thank you, you. councillor. <clears throat> I have a late communication. We have the zoning amendment for 40 R Smart Growth District received late from Any the city Any objections to the late communication? No. Okay. No. Go ahead. Are there any objections? No. No. Correct. Right. President. Do you have a motion, Councillor Bishop? Yeah, Councillor. I make a motion to move to a second reading and send a copy to the planning board for their review. If and there a are no subcommittee? Objections. Yes, to Can subcommittee. Uh, to the planning board? That's, that's, what, what, I just that's what she just said. Right, right but you moved it to a second no reading. I mean, no, no, she corrected herself. She sent it to a subcommittee of conference and to the planning board and for review. Board. A copy there's be sent to the planning board for review. Is, is that not yeah. what you want, Councillor Robinson? There's an order that'll handle that. Right. This is just a communication. All right. So we accept it. We accept, accept and file. Accept file this. You'll have an order coming up on the okay. business. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. You have the, on the communications and petitions to the council, you have a copy of a communication received from city clerk, parking clerk, Jeanette said to our white regarding the actions approved at the January 15, 2019 Traffic and Parking Commission meeting. What are we doing? Anyone? Accept and file, anybody? Councilor Rizzo, accept and file under uh, suspension if there's no Mouse. objections. Under subcommittee uh -huh. reports, uh, committee reports, a copy of the city manager employment agreement received from the subcommittee on on the city manager contract renewal is properly before you. Okay, Chair recognizes Councilor Vidot. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. I'd like to move this to a roll call vote, but I'd like to offer an amendment. Um, this is the new city manager contract, but for some reason we omitted the amount of her salary, and so I want to amend it so we can include it inside of the contract. So under number four where it says compensation, for his service, Mr. Ambrosino shall be paid. That figure is $189,945.52. And then the second number, where it says Mr. Ambrosino's salary shall be set at 3% above his current rate, the current rate is $184,913. So I'd like to move it to roll call vote as amended, and I'd like to see 184,913. Okay. Can I speak? Can I speak on it? Thank you. So we created a subcommittee to uh, come up with a city manager, the contract for the city manager. Um, on the committee was Councillor Rodriguez, Councillor Tejada, and Councillor Recupero, and myself. Um, and we met, and the only changes that we have to the contract um, were the performance review for his contract in the past had been in April. We're now doing it in October. It's a hectic time for us with budget season. So we're trying to change it so it'll be in October so it doesn't um, impede with any other city business. Um, in his previous contract, it was a four-year contract. This one would be a five-year contract. Um, Mr. Ambrosino has done an amazing job. He got, a, he got an amazing evaluation when we um, 
when we reviewed his performance a couple of months back. Um, and we wanted to support him in getting closer to retirement age in case he decided to retire at the end of the contract. I'm not saying he should, I'm just saying in case he decided. Um, and on top of that, we also gave him an additional $500 for travel expenses. Um, other than that, everything is still the same. We just extended the contract another year. Um, and when his, when his contract starts in the beginning of the new fiscal year, he will start with a 3% raise, which is standard with all City Hall employees. Um, that's all I have to say, and I hope that, um, that's it. I'm over to the roll call. Anybody, anybody else, else like has to speak anybody on it? Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Um, I'll be voting in favor for the manager's contract. Um, Mr. Um, City Manager has done a great job. Um, his personal commitment to Chelsea is the quality of Chelsea's life. I want to thank him for his creative thinking. Also working with each and every counselor. I think he's a very approachable city manager. I think any time that I ask him to explain to me why we're considering this or why we should um, have this without the council's knowledge. He's invited me into his office and given me the nuts and bolts and the full detail. So I want to thank him for his vision. I want to thank him for that vision turning into reality. Although he, he's had such uh, a lot on his plate since he's been here, I mean, a lot of it has turned our city around and made our city very prideful to be called Chelsea. So I want to, Tom, you've made the pride in Chelsea uh, wake up. Um, you've done a great job uh, on your last few years here. I look forward to working with you um, going forward. And I believe that you still committed, wholly committed to doing a better job than you have done the last past years. Um, I've talked to residents about his commitment and their conversation with him. I've talked to the business community. For the most part, everyone has positive feedback. Um, he's a workaholic. On Saturday mornings when I'm riding around, I see him over here. So I know we're not open, but I see him over here. Um, he's going down Fifth Street looking at different projects. Um, I haven't had a chance to really work with him on the union stuff. I know we've had some, con we, we've had some union contracts and some mitigation, but from all that I hear, Tom, everyone said you are very fair. They say you're a very um, decent man as a city manager. I know you bring that workaholic from the city of Revere where you were mayor at, but I just want to thank you for your vision here in Chelsea, for your creative thinking, and also for your positive um, commitment to not only the city council, but also to the um, city hall employees. You brought the um, holiday festivities back. Um, it was a great success. I know a lot of folks in city hall put it together, but I know you started that initiative. I know you started the beautification of putting the um, the um, work down in City Hall Square and Chelsea Square and Clary Square, and it's paid off. I know there was a little um, stumbling block at first. Um, members didn't really want to spend the money, but we had the money. You bettered the city of Chelsea. The decoration made people feel good, um, and it's been a lot of pride here. So I want to thank you for your work and looking forward to your continued vision of Chelsea. Thank you. Councilor Bishop. I want to echo what Councillor Brown said. Um, I have had problems in my district with various items, and the city manager has been very responsive. Um, I had problems with the rodent control program. We right away called a meeting with the owner of the company that has the contract. We had a meeting in his office. I brought up the problems I was having, and I think we ironed them out. Uh, the same thing happened uh, recently with the uh, ISD department. And other, other issues that I've had, everything that I've had a problem with and brought to his attention has been taken care of in a timely and professional way. And I certainly would be insane if I were to vote against having Tom uh, Ambrosino um, reappointed as city manager. He does like to spend money a little too much in my opinion, but <laughs> we can overlook that. Uh, and we'll keep an eye on that. But I want to commend him and say I'm very happy to vote for him. Councilor Cooper? I don't have much to say. Great job. Continue what you're doing, and we're happy to have you. Thank you. Councilor Pelotonda? Yeah, I'll be voting for Tom's contractor as well. I want to, you know, uh, congratulate the, the uh, council, the members that put this contract together. 
The only thing that bothers me is that the council wasn't involved at the, after the contract was put together. I think we should have been all involved and discussed what was in the contract instead of reading this online before we got our packets. I mean, the city manager is going to be getting 189000 I think he's worth a lot more than that. I mean, there's other people in the city of Chelsea that are making more than the city manager is, and I think we could be compensated a little bit better than we have. But that's the only thing I have. Thank you. Councilor Garcia. So I will be brief. I will echo what everyone else has said. I think you have been an incredible asset and resource to this community. Um, and I beg to defer with my colleague, keep spending because you're making the city a better place. And I know that you're investing in, in my district a lot and I hear it all the time from my constituents. They love the fact that their streets are paved. They love the fact that there's more lighting. So all these investments have been wise and I know that you've been very strategic about them because you want to improve quality of life, so I really appreciate that commitment. So keep speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Robinson. First of all, I'd like to say good luck. I happened to negotiate the first contract and hired Tom Ambrosino. I think the committee did an outstanding job. I think we got the best candidate at that time. And to me, you proved to me that you're the best candidate the fact that you have an open door policy, not only for this council, but for people in this community to come up and hear their differences. We have a, I have a little difference of opinion about how we spend the money. If we don't spend the money, we don't improve the community, but we will keep an eye on what we're spending. But the best to you, and welcome back. Anybody else like to speak? Okay, at this point, we'll move forward with a vote, a roll call vote on the agreement uh, as amended. Councilor Garcia? Yes. Councilor Vido? Yes. Councilor Abzanade Absent. Councilor Rodriguez? Yes. Councilor Lopez? Yes. Councilor Brown? Yes. Councilor Perlatonda? Yes. Councilor Tejada? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Bishop? Yes. Councilor Recupero? Yes. Ten in favor, none opposed, one after motion. <laughs> Before we go on to the next order of business, I just want to clarify the communication that came through regarding the zoning 40R um, for Ennis Development. Councillor Garcia, there is not an order, so Councillor Garcia has moved the matter to the planning board for review as well as the subcommittee on conference so we as a council can discuss it. And schedule a public hearing. And we'll be and to schedule a public hearing. <laughs> All right, uh, moving forward, second readings. Okay, the, uh, we have uh, second readings. Yes. We have 10 second readings. And unless someone objects, I would like to have it one roll call. Any objections to have one roll call for 10 second readings? And I just want to explain them quickly, if I might. H, pull out H. At yes, the and then we have to pull out the one on the school department because the amount has changed. So you're asking to so all of the others. All bundle of up A through J, no, A through I. Which one with the, the exception of, of H, H to a second reading. Okay, H has, the other two items have to stay in there, I believe. It's just the $1,988.75. So you just have to strike that out. From, from mm, I think, I think, is that what we're doing? I thought we said, yep. Yeah. Okay. For the other two items that are there, there are two other items that are there. And they, those have to stay in, it's $544 and 26 cents for EDCO Collaborative. I gotta find where we are. We'll All right. Recess. Well, $200 we'll recess for uh, We're just gonna call a recess for just one minute so we can just organize our paperwork for one second. Okay. Pull that out and 
Okay. All right. So, all right. And okay. if I might explain the other nine appropriations, they're not appropriations, they're transfers within the budget. Uh, for money that it hasn't been used for one item. Councillor, would you mind speaking into the microphone? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. We're back to order. These are not appropriations, these nine items. They're transfers within the departments for uh, capital improvement programs, funds that have not been used but are needed in other areas, and it's transferring them from those areas to the areas where the funds are needed. This money is, not, we are not appropriating money, we're transferring money on all of these. Okay. okay. Thank you. So we're voting A through J with the exception of H. H okay. Uh, Councilor Garcia? Yes. Councilor Vidal? Yes. Councilor Abazaneda absent. Councilor Rodriguez? Yes. Councilor Lopez? Yes. Councilor Brown? Councilor Perlatonda? Yes. Councilor Tejada? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Councilor Bishop? And Council Recupero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In favor? None opposed. Three absent. Yep. And Madam President, on H, I move to strike the uh, nineteen hundred and eighty eight dollars and seventy five cents for seam collaborative and leave the other two that are listed there in the order. Got and this it. is to pay a prior year bills in the school department. One is five hundred and forty four dollars and twenty six cents and the other one is $200. And the third one will be coming up under new business because that, that has been increased by the city manager. Okay, okay. so item H, we're, send, we're having a roll call vote on it with the exception of the 1988 for seam collaborative that will be coming up under new business. So we're voting on the two figures. Okay. I move roll call. Got it. So we're accepting $544 and $200. We're striking out $1,988. Correct. Okay. Councilor Garcia? Yes. Councilor Vido? Yes. Councilor Abadoneda? Absent. Councilor Rodriguez? Yes. Councilor Lopez? Yes. Councilor Brown? Absent. Councilor Perlotonda? Yes. Councilor Tejada? Yes. Councilor Robertson? Absent. Councilor Bishop? Yes. Councilor Recupero? Yes. Eight in favor, none opposed, three absent, motion adopted. New business. New business. Yes. First item under new business. Order introduced by Council Lopez and Council Recupero. Request that a subcommittee on conference be held with the city manager, 9-11 emergency management director, and the chief of police so the emergency management director can introduce himself to city councilors, can discuss his role and vision he hopes to implement in 2019 in the city of Chelsea, and to answer questions that will further help all entities present understand how to work together to keep the community safe. Council Recupero. I'd like to adopt the suspension if there's no objection, I'd like to speak on it. Seeing no objections, you have the floor, Councillor. Uh, we have a new 911 director. We don't know who he is. He's never come to us. He's never said, this is who I am. This is what I intend to do. So we would like for him to come and tell us what he intends to do, to talk with all of us, and how he intends to go together with the police department, them two, to coordinate how they, because it seems to be a lot of times there's issues between 911 and the police department. Or the police department says the 911. So now we would like to know how and how what he's going to do, and he would, would like at least him to come up and show, tell us what he intends to do and who he is, introduce himself to us. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Lopez. Yes. Uh, yeah, we we put this order together with Councillor Recupero. I was wondering who the 911 director is. Uh, he's been here since July last year, I think, and we don't know who he is. Uh, we want to know what is his idea, uh, mm -hmm. wh what, is, what he thinks about our city. Uh, like Councilor Recupero said, sometimes we call 911, and for whatever reason we call, they don't send an officer. And then when, when I ask, like the chief, he said, oh, we didn't get a call from, from 911. So we want to know what's going on. Even if for a minimum call for 
blocking driveway or, or whatever it is, they should respond to this cost to the uh, community. And I want to see how he's going to work with the chief, and I want the city manager to be there also, so that way we know what his, uh, his ideas are. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else? No. Councillor Robinson. Uh, putting this in, I did request this back in September. We never seem to be able to make it to a conference, so I want to applaud my two counselors for submitting this, and hopefully we will have a conference. So I, I do have some questions I would like to ask, as opposed to my two colleagues also. Thank you. Okay, next order of business. Next order of business, I'd introduce my counsel, Ray Cooper, will be dark, uh, Paul, uh, Tonda. I'm Yves Rideau, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, Council Perlotonda, Council Bishop, Council Lopez, and Council Tejada. Request that the city manager look into the possibility of the city of Chelsea owning its own trash trucks and picking up its own trash and whether this would benefit the residents of the city. Council of Acupero. I'll ask on the suspension if there's no objection, like the speaker. I'd like to make a motion to move the conference. There are no objections. Um, a motion to move it to conference? Yes. Um, no, nah, take a roll call vote. A What's roll the call. point of doing a conference? Okay, yeah. okay, are you moving it to a roll call? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So, discussion. any discussion on uh, the motion, Councillor Robinson? Yes. I just kind of feel we keep putting things out there that we have no idea what the cost is going to be. Uh, a person whose family had been in the rubbish business for a long time, I kind of can relate to what some of the cost in order to do that. Just for an example, if we were go to go out to buy a, a new truck, it would cost us about two six two hundred sixty thousand dollars, and then we'd have to retrofit that truck to accommodate the barrels that we have. We have a couple compactors at the uh, schools and whether they're owned by Russell or they're owned by the city. Uh, you know, those are, you know, some questions I had. And the other piece is, you know, if we're going to make a move to pick up our own trash, are we also going to take care of the business community? Or are they going to have to go out on their own to take care of their own trash? So there's, there's, there's a, lot, a lot involved. That, and without any numbers in front of me, this could cost anywhere from $3 million to $3.5 million a year, possibly, to reach this goal. So that's why I asked if we can go to conference. Oh, thank you. On the, on the motion? Yes, ma'am. I understand what my fellow counsel is saying, but the point is this. We're only asking him to see if it's worth going to conference. If he comes back to us and says, well, it's going to cost too much money, what is the point of going to conference? Isn't it better to get an idea from the word, the, the gentleman that's in charge of it all, for him to tell us, this is what it is. It's not feasible, it can't be done. If it could be done, then we'll send it to conference and look at it. If it can't be done, what's the point? Mm -hmm. Sending it to conference, isn't it better to get the information before you send it to conference? Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Lopez and then Councilor Bishop. Yes, uh, Councilor Recuper and I, we were thinking about this. The reason that we put this together with the support of the counselors is this company is not doing the job. They're leaving trash behind, mattresses behind. They pick up recycle sometimes, sometimes they don't. And I'm tired of this. They get paid big bucks over here to do the job. They don't, mm. don't want to do it. They either don't want to do it or they can't do it. I don't know what it is, but uh, we should look into a way. Maybe we can buy a truck, a couple of trucks, and with all the money that this company is making from us, we can buy these trucks, hire a couple more people from Chelsea, and do it ourselves. Thank you. Councilor Bishop. Uh, I just want to make it clear that I do not have a problem with the current uh, contractor. In my area, there are, there are no complaints that I have received, not a single one in the year that I've been here. So if we can save money, Don, I'm interested in hearing what, what they have to say. <laughs> uh, you, the former counselor at large said, well, we could cost three and a half million. You're spending that now or more. So that's the whole idea of asking to see if we are going to save money. 
if we're not going to, if we can't do it, then there's no need for a conference. Um, but if we can do it, then we can have a conference and look into it. Um, like I say, though, I want to make it clear, I, I can't criticize the current people that are doing the job. Mm -hmm. In my area, they're there every week on time and they do a professional job. Mattresses, they only pick up if they're covered. If the mattress is covered in plastic, they'll take it. If it's not covered in plastic, they won't take it. And that's been made clear to all of the residents, I would hope. And uh, anybody putting a mattress out on the sidewalk that isn't covered in a plastic, they're not going to pick it up. So I just want to make that clear. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Pelatonda. Even though I signed on as one of my fellow councils, I did some research in the meantime after I signed on to this. I have no objection to the city manager looking into what it's going to cost the city to have Chelsea pick up their own trash and garbage and recycling and all that stuff. But I did some research checking with the city of Cambridge. I know it's a much bit bigger city than the city of Chelsea. But they have 110,000 people there. We have approximately 60,000 people there. So even if you cut that in half uh, for Chelsea, Cambridge is now paying $12,050,645 to pick up trash. That includes six trucks with three people on those trucks, for regular trash, two organic trucks, which picks up compost, two more people, two city trucks that go around and pick up the trash in front of the city hall and garbage around certain areas in the city. That's two more people. So you're talking, like I said, $12 million right there. Cut that in half, that's $6 million to the city of Chelsea. Are we really going to be saving any money? Like I said, I have no objection to the city manager looking into it, but from what my calculations are and what I've looked into, I don't think it's going to be feasible for us. I mean, if you can find somebody a lot cheaper than what Russell is doing right now, good luck. Thank you. All right, so the vote is on whether or not the matter should go to a subcommittee. Can you clarify a yes vote? A yes vote would send it to the conference, a no vote would not send it to the count, uh, conference, and the motion would be adopted under suspension by Council Recupero. Uh, Councilor Garcia? No. Councilor Vido? No. Councilor Abinader, absent. Councilor Rodriguez? Yes. Councilor Lopez? No. Councilor Brown? Okay. Absent. Council Pilatonda? No. Council Tejada? No. Council Robinson? Yes. Council Bishop? No. Council Recupero? No. Uh, three in favor. One, two, three, four, five, six opposed. And two absent. Motion is defeated and so adopted under manager. suspension to go to the city manager by Council Recupero. Okay. And for uh, the. Okay. Next card introduced by Council Recupero request that the city manager look into putting the only street light on Charles Street on the highest setting for brightness. Councilor Recupero, your order for the light on Charles Street? Oh, yeah. Charles Street, most people don't even what, know. What's your motion? Like to adopt under suspension if there's no objection. Seeing none, you have the floor, Councilor. Go ahead. Right. Charles Street is a street that most people don't even know exists. I did anyway. You ask the people at Chelsea, where is Charles Street? <laughs> well, where is it? Well, it's a puny little, well, it's really not even a street. It's a, it's, a, it's a section between one street and another. It took me years to get a light pole there. Now there's a light pole there, but it's not bright. So I would ask the city manager to put it a bright. So when you go between them, you can see where the street is. Because there's really, I think they're going to put a small sidewalk there now, which it never had. It was just a dirt road. But the lights will enhance that area a lot more. And it will make it even brighter. And it will deter people that go there at night to do certain things in that small little street because it's a, it's a very, there's no one there. It's, it's just a lonely old street. And the light will keep a company now. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Okay, the next order introduced by Councillor Cooper ordered that the city manager conduct a study to alleviate traffic congestion, specifically on Meridian Street Bridge Park and Pearl Street, that's affecting the lives of all residents of the city of Chelsea. Councilor Recupero. I'd like to adopt on suspension if there's no objection, I'd like to speak on it. Any objections? Nope, you've got the floor. Um, we, I, we put something for this about two and a half years ago, three years ago, I, I think, and uh, 
never came back. They did a study. They did a study for the intersection and William Street and going down. But that's not, there could be problems there. I have a thing here that tells me what they intend to do with it. But the problem exists a lot more at the intersections there between Park, Pearl, and they all go to Congress, the small section of Congress right into Broadway. They go to Route 16 there, and it's getting worse and worse all the time. So I don't know what we can do to fix it, but maybe there's something we can do to make the lives better of the people that live around that area. But it takes a very long time during peak hours to go from one place to the other, and that area is all one ways. So if you're caught in that place, you're gonna be there for a long time. So I don't know what we can do, but it doesn't hurt to at least find out what we can do to try to make it better for the people that live there. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Recupero. Next to introduce Councilor Robinson. Request that the city manager give the city council an update on all developments that are in the pipeline for our development. Councilor Robinson. Uh, Mention if there are no objections. I don't see any. Would you like to speak on it? Uh, just briefly, I think that I would like to know uh, pretty much what uh, all new developments that are taking place in the community and what the status of those developments are and what kind of timeline that we're on to see their completion. So if you can, I, I would just adopt this unanimously on the suspension. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. Uh, next order of next business. Next order of business, order introduced by Council Robinson, request that a subcommittee on conference be held with the city manager, city solicitor, and planning and development to explore contract language, i.e. penalties and bonuses, and holding contractors to their contract. Councilor Robinson. Uh, adopt this unanimously under suspension. I'll, I'll be brief. I know that the state, when they, when they sign contracts with anybody doing business, that they're allowed to put in language in regards to penalties and bonuses. I know that we have some contracts that are out there, um, and I don't believe there's any timeline or anything to them. I did ask about t looking at this in the beginning, and I, I would like to follow up on this so that to see whether legally we can put in some language if the contractor finishes before the time that there would be a bonus, or if he didn't, that we'd be able to penalize them. Okay, thank you, Councilor Robinson. <clears throat> Next order of business. Yes. Uh, to attend the funeral service, yep. and he asked me to make a motion that um, uh, orders 12G through 12Q uh, be moved to the subcommittee on finance and accounts. Okay. Move all, the financial, orders. Move all the financial orders. Yep. Move Up all. to Q. To subcommittee on finance. Okay. okay. And the final order will be introduced by Council of Robinson. Request that a subcommittee and conference be held with the city manager and planning and development to talk about the status of the master plan. Councilor Robinson. Uh, yes, adopt this unanimously under suspension. I think it's self-explanatory. In, um, in the past, I've asked to look into a master plan, and we were waiting for the harbor plan to be finalized so that we can incorporate all the other things that we're doing within a city into a master plan and talk about a master plan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, public announcements? Yeah. Council Recupero? I, like I have a public announcement and one that's a person who died. The public announcement is uh, the salt you can get at, at, at the park. You got to go inside the park to get the salt. The, you have to go inside the park, not where the salt is. And Eastern Salt Mineral on Meridian, a marginal? Where Ports Park is. You got to go inside. Uh, la gente se usted quiere coger sal, I tú know. vas a quedar donde está el parque, no meal. donde venden el sal, donde el carro cobre el sal. Allá lo puedo coger, allá. And uh, another... Well, let's save the moments of silences okay. to uh, the end. Councilor Lopez. Oh, one, one more, one minute. I'd like to say thank you. I, I had another grandson. Congratulations, <laughs> Councilor Cooper. <laughs> so, far it's, so far it's won every meeting. <laughs> Councilor Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this public announcement, uh, I would like to inform the community that uh, the city passed some barrels to the whole city. Uh, I think it was in uh, September or October, somewhere around there. And uh, the reason that we gave the barrels, the new barrels, 
We spend so much money on that. It's for us to use it. I've been seeing in different streets, they're still using oil barrels with big holes. So what you guys did with, with the new ones that the city gave you? The reason that we gave those barrels is to use it. So please use your trash barrels and don't hide it in the basement or somewhere else. Use it. Thank you. Um, I just want to acknowledge uh, school committee woman Rosemary Carlisle that's here. I also want to um, send uh, well, get well wishes to Joanne Hooley from Emeralds Hill, who was involved in a vehicle accident, uh, motor vehicle accident today. Um, and I had something else and I can't remember what it was. So let's acknowledge Councillor Pelotonda. The Easton uh, Minerals Company that's given free salt to Chelsea residents. Just call them to find out what times you can go there. Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday, and I believe Saturday to get free salt. You have to show a Chelsea ID, a license or something like that. But I just want to thank Joe and Sheila for all they do for the city of Chelsea. I've been at some meetings sometimes and people haven't been very nice to them. They're kind of getting bashed on uh, what they're doing on there because of the salt. But they're doing a great job and they do care about the Chelsea residents. Anybody else? Okay, moments of silence. Silence for Mrs. Lewis. She lived on Sharma Street, longtime resident. She just died Saturday. I got a, uh, two F3 for uh, firefighter Frank Murphy. Um, mm -hmm. He passed away. Uh, retired firefighter Rico Tyree officially passed away. He, Elaine Tyree, who was the uh, head nurse in the operating room, but also going back to the 60s, she was involved in organizing against domestic violence. Any other moments of silence? Yeah, uh, my grandmother passed away yesterday at oh. eight in the morning. Um, that's it. She was 103. She lived a long life. <laughs> um, I also want to have a moment of silence. I can't remember the first name, but the last name is Vegas. Former school committee, uh, former city council president Marilyn Vega's nephew passed away. What was it Jerry Vega? Seeing no further business before us, we're adjourned.